everyone. Join us on a journey through the history of developmental psychology as we explore the profound changes in our understanding of child development. In this video, we delve into the shifting perceptions of children over time and the influential figures who shape the field. Discover the milestones, theories and modern research methods that have unraveled the secrets of child development. To understand child development, we must first examine the different stages that mark their growth. From the prenatal period to infancy, childhood, adolescence and early adulthood, each stage brings unique challenges and transformations. Throughout history, children were often depicted as miniature adults in art and culture. However, societal perceptions of what ages count as childhood and attitudes towards children have varied across time and cultures. During the medieval era, children were seen as vulnerable beings requiring protection. The Reformation period brought a contrasting view, considering children as inherently evil and in need of civilising. The modern study of developmental psychology emerged during the Industrial Era. Concerns for child safety and well-being grew as young children were employed in hazardous environments like coal mines and factories. In 1933, the Society for Research in Child Development was established, marking a significant milestone in the scientific exploration of child development. Theories on the origins of knowledge and the mechanisms of child development have evolved over time, shaped by influential thinkers and researchers. Plato believed in innate knowledge, emphasising the importance of careful upbringing and discipline. Aristotle, on the other hand, argued that all knowledge comes from experience. John Lott, in the 1690s, proposed the concept of tabula rasa, suggesting that parents can mould a child's development as they see fit. Jean Jacques Rousseau in the 1760s advocated for the idea of the noble savage, believing that children are born innocent but are corrupted by society. The study of children's development gained momentum through the contributions of influential figures. Charles Darwin in the 1870s pioneered baby biographies, observing individual children intensively. G. Stanley Hall in the 1890s, conducted large-scale norming studies concluding that genetics contribute to development, with child development unfolding automatically, while Freud and Erickson in the 1990s found child development was driven by a resolution of conflict between biological drives and social expectations. John B. Watson in the 1920s focused on behaviourist approaches, finding that positive and negative learning through punishment and rewards drive development. Jean Piaget and Lev Vygotsky in the 1930s made significant contributions through experimental research, developing cognitive stages and the zone of proximal development respectively. These early studies laid the foundation for our understanding of child development and paved the way for modern research methods. In modern child research, age is commonly denoted in years, months and days. However, there are several challenges in studying children, such as their comprehension of language and tailoring tasks to their appropriate age group. An example of a popular test is the marshmallow test, where children are tasked with resisting immediate gratification in exchange for a larger reward, illustrating the concepts of temptation and delayed gratification. The marshmallow test was originally created by psychologist Walter Michel and his colleagues in the late 1960s and early 1970s. The study involved placing children in a room with a marshmallow or a similar treat and offering them a choice. They could either eat the treat immediately or wait a certain amount of time, typically 15 minutes, without eating it and receive an additional treat as a reward. The researchers then observed the children to see how they dealt with the temptation and whether they were able to delay gratification. The findings of the marshmallow test were intriguing. Some children were able to resist the temptation and delay gratification, while others succumbed to the immediate desire and ate the marshmallow. Follow-up studies showed that children who were able to wait longer for the second treat tended to have better outcomes in various areas of their lives. These outcomes included higher academic achievement, better social skills, improved emotional well-being and even better physical health. The test highlighted the importance of self-control and delayed gratification in predicting future success and sparked interest in understanding the development of these skills. It also shed light on the interplay between impulsivity and self-regulation, suggesting that the ability to resist immediate temptation can have long-term implications for individuals. The marshmallow test remains a widely recognised and influential experiment in the field of psychology. Infancy is a critical period for cognitive development. Even in the earlier stages, infants exhibit remarkable abilities that researchers can measure, such as looking at objects, making facial expressions and interacting with their environment. These actions provide valuable insights into their developing minds. 
In fact, researchers employ various methods to study infants, including measuring brain activity, observing psychophysical changes and analysing looking behaviours. For instance, newborns have the incredible ability to imitate facial expressions, which suggest they are already aware of their own faces. As infants grow, their responses become more sophisticated. Around two months of age, they start to smile back at people, displaying their social engagement. This smile, known as contingent feedback, is reinforced by others around them. However, blind babies may require different feedback to maintain their smiles since they lack visual reinforcement. Researchers also employ fascinating techniques like non-intrusive sucking to understand infants' preferences. By observing changes in their sucking rate, psychologists can determine which visual stimuli capture their attention. For example, infants as young as 12 to 36 hours old can display a preference for familiar faces such as their mothers over other strangers. Another method used to study infants' cognitive processes is through their looking behaviour. By tracking their eye movements, researchers can gain valuable insights. For instance, infants naturally follow faces, even on objects like a table tennis bat, but not on a blank surface. They are also able to demonstrate boredom and preference, such as where they look first, within their eye movements. To determine if infants recognise familiar faces, researchers employ the habituation or dishabituation paradigm. They show infants the same image repeatedly until they become bored. Then they introduce a new image to see if infants react to the change. This paradigm allows researchers to understand when infants become categorising and expecting different stimuli. Additionally, researchers employ simple preference tests where infants are presented with two options to explore their early cognitive abilities. As early as one month old, infants show a preference for familiar faces they've seen before, as well as a fascination with novel stimuli. Advanced technology also plays a crucial role in studying infants' cognitive development. Eye-tracking devices, for example, can precisely determine where infants are looking. It's remarkable that even at six months old, infants automatically fixate on faces first, even if they are inverted. To gain a deeper understanding of psychophysical changes, researchers employ techniques like EEG. This allows them to observe brain activity and identify which areas are more active during specific tasks or stimuli. As infants grow older, researchers expanded their studies to include imitation and communication. They observe how infants imitate actions and gestures, such as pointing, as well as how they develop language skills. And there you have it. By employing various creative and innovative methods, psychologists are able to unravel the mysteries of infants' cognitive abilities. It's truly fascinating to witness the incredible development of their minds from the earliest stages. We hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the captivating world of infant cognition. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos. Until next time, keep exploring and unlocking the wonders of the human mind.